join Forum IES Academy, trusted by hundreds of toppers, including IES Rank 1, Anudeep Durisheti, Shruti Sharma, and Ishita Kishore. Hello everyone, welcome to Key Concepts of Anthropology. Today we are going to talk about guiding principles of anthropology. Now what do I mean by this term uh, guiding principles? So like you know, every discipline has certain foundational paradigms around which it is oriented. They even act as the uh, broad parameters which act as the base of the discipline. Right? So here I'm going to tell you what are those parameters for anthropology as a discipline. The first parameter is called holism. The second one is called fieldwork tradition. The third one is called cultural relativism. The fourth one is called cross-cultural analysis. And the fifth one is humanistic and scientific approach. Now, let us see one by one, what do these terms broadly indicate? The first term which I've used here is holism. If I look at the origin of this term, this has derived from the term holistic, which means an all-round study or an all-round perspective of what anthropology as a discipline means. If you remember, in the first uh, video, I told you a simple definition of anthropology, that it is the holistic study of man across space and time. So this is the usage of the term holistic. I think now it makes more sense. Holistic means all-round perspective. So that is why when we talk about studying anthropology, we are focusing on every aspect, socio-cultural part, archaeological part, linguistic component, and the societal, tribal component. So it is all-round in its approach. That is the meaning of the term holism. And it is one of the most important paradigms in anthropological research. You must have come across a term which is opposite to this term, it's called as atomistic. If you look at this term, we know what is an atom, right? It is indivisible further. I cannot divide it more further. Therefore, an atomistic view would mean that it is a very uh, narrow view. Whereas holistic view is very broad view, right? This is the first principle. The second principle, which I have written over here, is fieldwork tradition. What do I mean by this? If you look at the term here, field. Field means where you are going to a particular site and doing your research work. Why I'm using this particular term? Suppose you have to go and uh, study about the Harappan civilization. You want to look at it firsthand, that what kind of artifacts were found, how, what kind of life did they live. So let's say you are going to Harappa or Mohanjadaro or Rakhigadi, the largest site. So you go there and you record your observations. That is a part of fieldwork tradition. The exact opposite of doing a research on the similar topic would be you sitting in a library and referring to some book, some other writer who has written on Rakhigadi, or you are using internet. Okay, that is called as armchair research work. Okay, so usually armchair based research work was seen in anthropology in very early stages and also it is seen in times of crisis. Suppose during World War II also there was a uh, methodology which was used which was called field work at a distance. Obviously since it is a war zone you cannot go into the war zone, no? But you do want to study the communities and so you study them from a distance, right? So fieldwork tradition as of now is one of the bulwarks in anthropology where you get a cumulative understanding of people from their perspective. Okay, 
another related term which you will study in anthropology it's also called as emic versus etic perspective the outsider's view versus the insider's view so when you are doing field work tradition suppose you go and visit the todas so you look at their way of life you look at their cattle complex you look at how they churn butter what is their mainstay what kind of deities do they worship right so that gives you a insider perspective so that you do not judge the community with respect to their eating choices or worship choices etc right so that is the importance of field work tradition a related term to this tradition is called cultural relativism it is opposite to the idea called ethnocentrism okay these two terms are opposite now let me break it down for you what do i mean by ethnocentrism so if you break this term down ethno has its roots in ethnicity centrism means that you believe that your culture is the best culture of the world this is exactly what happened when initial research in anthropology began the evolutionist school of uh, thought the classical evolutionism the first school they believed that we are the best therefore they termed their way of life or their idea of culture as civilization the most developed one and they named the tribal communities as primitive savage so these terms were given which were which are you know in context even used today with respect to some tribes now that is called as ethnocentrism when you are very egoistic about your culture and you believe it to be the most superior one the opposite of that concept is cultural relativism where you are open minded to accept the very idea that certain cultures may not live according to your culture suppose i'm visiting a chinese seafood market and there i see people consuming uh, you know snakes uh, octopus so i sh i shouldn't react that oh my god why are they eating this because that may come as a culture shock for somebody who is from a different place across the world but for them it is their mainstay it is their source of food so if i say that yes i am in that part of the world where this might be a option for a good source of protein seafood so therefore yes they might eat it as well it depends entirely on the geography and economy of a particular place that what kind of food are they consuming so the second view is called as cultural relativistic view where i am sensitive enough to accommodate the opposite perspective to respect their perspective and not give a judgment a front right so that is why i was telling you field work tradition and cultural relativism are interrelated to each other because when you go and look at the tribe the way they are eating living only then you will be in a position to accept the idea that yes this is the need of their way of life the next principle is cross cultural analysis so this means what that if i am an anthropologist and i am doing research at the ground level i will end up studying multiple communities and when i study multiple communities i'll have different perspectives i will get to know uh, you know uh, in a broad horizon about the ways of life about alternate uh, kind of uh, mechanisms of survival etc so i can do a cross cultural comparison i can analyze that what community has what kind of way of life that suits it best right so that is the meaning of cross cultural analysis and this principle means that it uses both humanistic and scientific techniques when you will start studying anthropology you will come across a quote that anthropology is the most scientific subject amongst the humanities and the most humanistic amongst the sciences so this gives you an barometer that yes what kind of study is this going to be it's going to incorporate both scientific methods as well as an angle of humanistic concerns during its research right so more on this in our classes which begin on 25th april i hope you've had a broad idea about the guiding principles thank you